Hi, thanks for joining. Today we're going to replace the capacitive sensor on an early release of the Wanhao Duplicator 9 with the newer inductive sensor. On the early releases of the Duplicator 9, the sensor was a capacitive type sensor. Capacitive sensors don't really care what is underneath them. They can sense your hand or you know, a piece of wood. In the case of the new sensor, it's an inductive sensor, which ideally is sensing iron. As a result, Wan Hao has changed the underbed material, not the top flexible magnetic sheet, but under here. On the early release, this was also a magnetic sheet. They're now uh, providing you a steel sheet that attaches to the aluminum bed. The steel is definitely much easier for the inductive sensor to sense at a further distance than something like aluminum would be. So we're gonna need a couple simple tools for this. We're gonna need a adjustable wrench or a spanner wrench, obviously the new inductive type sensor, and then your early release Wanhao D9. Um, there are two nuts on the top and bottom of this metal bracket. Just loosen the top one first. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which you loosen first, just get them loose. Then you should be able to spin it pretty freely by hand. On the top, just to make my job easier, I'm gonna pop this cable out and pull off this back plastic cover. It's kind of press fit on there, there we go. So on the top here, you have a cable from the sensor that plugs in to a little daughter board up top. Just unplug that one and then remove the original sensor. and then just reverse the process with your new sensor. Once we've got the sensor installed, we're gonna look at Wan Hao's documentation as far as how far down from this bracket the sensor should be protruding. I believe it's 26 millimeters, but I'll just double check to make sure. The new sensor is a little bit different in another way from the original sensor. The original sensor had a sensitivity dial on the side of the body of the sensor, right here, and the new one doesn't have any such adjustments. So your only way to adjust the new one is going to be uh, varying the distance that the tip sticks down from, from this bracket here. So I've connected it back the way I removed the original one, route the wires down, snap on the cover, sure everything's tucked in there. It's a pretty tight fit, so don't feel too bad if you kind of have to squish it down. And then reconnect this cable. These cables are keyed. There's a little notch um, indicating kind of the orientation that it's meant to go in. I've seen people actually manage to hook these in reversed. Uh, they're not going to fit in nicely if that notch is not aligned with the notch on the uh, other side of the socket. So you shouldn't have to really force anything in. Make sure you've got that notch oriented correctly. Uh, in this case, I just kind of snipped off my filament instead of removing the filament from the hot end uh, rather than heating it up at the time, but we'll uh, take care of that in a minute as well. So now I'm gonna refer to the documentation and just double check exactly how far down this sensor needs to be from that bracket. So I checked the documentation and I was right. It's supposed to be 26 millimeters down from the bottom side of this bracket to the edge of the tip. I have this obnoxiously large caliper that I'm gonna use in my case. You can use a, uh, a small ruler in centimeters and millimeters if you'd like. And I'm just going to get as close as is reasonably possible to 26 millimeters. Okay, so I need to come down quite a bit here. And these little lock washers here, there's a lot of play. So as you tighten the bottom one, it's gonna actually pull the sensor down a little bit further as well. So I would suggest you get them reasonably tight before you make your final measurement and before you crank it down right at the very end. We need to come down quite a bit more. Now 26 is really just our starting point. Once we start testing how it's behaving, we'll need to make small rotations of the sensor to 
move it just a little bit at a time until uh, we have it sensing at exactly the right distance between the nozzle and the bed. Okay, we're good there. So I'm gonna tighten up the top nut, trying to keep the sensor as stationary as possible. In this case, as I tighten, as I mentioned, this, this washer is going to crush and it's going to, since I'm tightening the top one, it's going to pull that sensor up just a little bit. So I was a hair past 26, so I'm intentionally tightening the top to bring it up that little extra bit. So I'll throw the mat back on the bed. Good enough for now. And I'm going to bring this down slowly and just see that it triggers. So using your menu, you go to utilities, move, and then the z-axis, you can move it up and down. I'm just gonna home X, Y, and Z. You can't actually move the Z up and down until you've homed it so that it knows where zero is. And I'm going to keep my finger right on the power switch in case it doesn't sense in time and starts ramming the nozzle into the bed. Okay, so it sensed and it's moved itself back up. So now it knows what Z equals zero is. So if I go to move, and I'm gonna move it somewhere near the center of the bed. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit Z negative. All right, so the light here is now illuminated and as we move the Z up, you'll see it goes off. So this means it's in a triggered state. So what we wanna do is check the distance between the nozzle and the bed make sure it's about paper thickness, and then we will back this sensor off just until it's triggering right at that paper thickness away from the bed. Okay, so we've confirmed when we home Z that the nozzle is still a little bit too far away from the bed. There's a couple ways we can go about uh, making sure that this is corrected. In this case, I've disabled the steppers and I'm going to move them down until the nozzle is nearly touching the bed. And just to see, plenty of space there. There's no drag on a paper yet. And right now the sensor is not triggering. So if it's not triggering, we need to move the sensor closer to the bed until it triggers. To move it closer to the bed, we're going to loosen the top nut. which will bring the sensor down a little bit further until it triggers. We can see it's triggering now, and if I bring it up a little bit, it's not triggering, right? So I'm going to tighten these nuts both up just a little bit. I'm not gonna fully tighten them yet. And I can use the rotation of the sensor to make very fine adjustments to the height of it between it and the bed. Just gonna loosen this a little bit more. A little bit of trial and error here. Okay, so I'm at the point right now where it's triggering and if I put even the slightest tension upwards it's not triggering. And so we're right on the cusp and I think I'll probably tighten that down in that position. I'm going to tighten the bottom which will ever so slightly bring the sensor closer to the bed and you can see that the sensor has been triggered as a result of that extra motion towards the bed. So if I go to utilities, move, and home Z. And we'll bring that down to Z equals zero. And check. Still no drag on the paper. So I will 
I want this to trigger with the nozzle being closer to the bed, so I'm going to move this further away from the bed. I can do that in very small amounts by tightening against the crush washer on the top. Sometimes you'll have to repeat this quite a few times until you get the right distance. As I mentioned before, it was a little bit easier with the uh, small adjustment dial on the body of the previous sensor. You could make very fine-tuned adjustments to its sensitivity to account for these really tiny distances, distance changes. Still need just a little bit more. Perfect. So I've got your typical amount of drag on a piece of paper, just the slightest amount between the nozzle and the bed. Uh, that might change a little bit as everything is heated up. Right now, this is all cold. Uh, when you do your auto bed leveling routine, ideally you would do this in G-code with everything up to temperature because metals do expand at temperature and you want it to account for that expansion as much as possible. So at this point, uh, we would be ready to load up a simple test print and uh, see, see how this is performing. So we've loaded up some filament and I've sliced up a simple XYZ calibration cube just to see that we're able to get something to stick to the bed and make sure that that distance is appropriate from the bed that we set it at. In my machine startup G-code, I have a G28 to home everything and then G29 to do the auto bed leveling sequence. Otherwise, you could kick off an auto bed level on the, on the touch screen. In my case, I just need to select the file and hit print, and it will do that for me. So our first test print, we found that it was still a little too close to the bed. So I made a couple other adjustments as you had seen to the length of the sensor, made the sensor down towards the bed a little bit more, which results in a little extra space between the bed and the nozzle. And the end result is a good print all around and we have great bed adhesion uh, and, a, and a great first layer. So I think mission accomplished there. Hopefully you found that helpful. If there's other videos you'd like to see for the D9 or any of the other printers you've seen on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe to get notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.